and I saw him when I was a boy, and I saw him box the first time. I thought, you know, we're looking at something we may never see again. I mean, he was like Golden State on the basketball court. Now. Right? He, he, it was like watching somebody you couldn't decide, is this guy a boxer or a ballerina? The way he moved, the speed, the grace, the power, I knew it was something magical. And then, when he was young, he was sort of brash and braggadocio and funny in his press conferences. And then he became a man and serious. He developed a religious faith. He developed political convictions. He opposed the Vietnam War. He made decisions and he lived with the consequences of them. And he never stopped being an American, even as he became a citizen of the world. We inspired people all over the world. And then later, he came down with his very serious health problems. Uh, when I was president, we had the Olympics in Atlanta. Those of you of a certain age may remember watching Muhammad Ali dealing with his Parkinson's disease, the last bearer of the Olympic torch up a ladder to light it. Once the most graceful, powerful athlete in the world with his hands shaking, holding on it, he did his job. And to the very end, he was actually astonishingly good humored about the burden of his later years. So by the time he died, who he was as a person was greater than his legend, which should be all of our goal in life. You want to be better than your publicity, not worse. Wow, former United States President Bill Clinton I mean, says he says he was greater than his legend, Muhammad Ali. Yes. Wow. Deep. Yes. Yeah, very deep, right? Woo. I mean, um, Mama De Lee, I mean, fights are in and out of the mm. ring. And uh, despite, you know, fighting the Parkinson uh, syndrome yeah. for the past uh, 32 years and his recent um, visits uh, to the hospital, some of us, you know, against rational expectations, mm -hmm. expected him to live forever. But you know, so, so the death has still come as a yeah. bit of a shock to us. We're trying to understand, mm. like, is he really gone? Yeah. That's how great um, one that he was and still is. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a very big loss uh, for, oh. you know, for boxing. Muhammad Ali transcends, you know, sports, nas na nationalism, mm. transcends. And, uh, you mm. know, race, you know, so uh, it's a massive loss, man. It's still, yeah, a lot of us are still yeah. trying to come to terms yeah. with what has happened. I remember when we were talking about it on Saturday, you said, yeah. Look, we talked about him on, mean, Friday, on Friday, and we said, This guy's what it takes. And confidently, we just said, yeah, He's yes. been fighting Parkinson forever, and it was exactly. great. Yeah, wow. So, yeah, so we're still trying to come to terms with it, but. You know, the, the reality is um, Muhammad Ali is no more, mm. but then his lasting legacy right. shall forever, that's right. you know, remain. And that's why I'm saying he's still the greatest title, mm -hmm. because for me, Muhammad Ali, you know, brought charisma to boxing. Of Everything, does, Floyd yeah. Mayweather Jr., Anthony Joshua, uh, Fury, or whatever mean, they're doing see, now, <laughs> it's from Muhammad Ali. Exactly. Uh, we've seen these guys, you know, try to sell fights, you know, by thrash talking mm. and everything. They've all done it, but none of them, you know, it, it does it as, you know, as um, poetically mm. as Muhammad Ali. So um, he, he's the greatest of all time. And his body's arrived in oh um, Louisville, uh, Kentucky right now. So, mm. I mean, it's starting to dawn on us that mm. this is real. This is real. His body is in that um, plane right there that's landed in Louisville, Kentucky. That's his hometown. Yeah. And um, he's expected to be buried on Friday and, wow. and it's going to be a public funeral as well to the that's, same, his family say wow. that's how he wanted it. That's how oh he wants goodness. it. And he's going to get his um, wish on Friday. And if you're anywhere in the world, if you want to attend, you know, the, the funeral of Muhammad Ali, you know, start booking your mm. flights uh, mm. to Louisville, Kentucky. We said the funeral service um, will be at the KFC Yum Center, which seats more than 20,000 
you know, people, yes. and we'll be live streamed at the census website. So, so Muhammad Ali, we will live forever. If you have this sort of life and everybody, I don't know who is influential in the world today that hasn't said a word or two about no, this legend. I, I don't know myself too. Yeah. Austin, and it's incredible. That's why I said earlier that it transcends, you know, the bounds of sports, race, and nationality. Wow. It's just a man. It's going to be historic. You know, the, the, mm. the burial is going to be historic as well. So, like I said, it's going to be streamed. So, if you can't make it to Louisville, you know, Go on your computer, be a part of history, mm. you know, to see when um, Muhammad Ali uh, finally goes home. But for us boxing fans, yeah, it's gone, but then it's still around, it's still alive. Wow. His legacy uh, surely uh, remains. Tayo, a legend, a mm. legend. Absolutely. Body just arrived yeah. in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, what a story. What a story. I mean, yeah. at 74, yeah. Yeah, people wanted more from this guy. Mm. You know, and just, it just goes to show that when you have an opportunity to do something, do it right. Yes. We heard Sean Rafa saying this is a guy that pulled out of high school, and then people with PhD, they're living on the things they said. Uh, yeah, that's it. Wow. I mean, he's got quotes for days. Also, uh, we can do a show. Injure the stone. I can yeah. make a man so sick. We can do a show. Wow. I mean, uh, one of my favorite is. <laughs> He said, he said, I don't like boxers to talk too much because that's my job. Just shut up. Let me do the talking. Oh, my God. I like the one <laughs> that what says, say, I man? need to know how tall you are so that when I knock you down, yeah. I need to be far, far off so you don't follow me. Incredible oh my stuff. God. He's got for days. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, you can understand why um, he's generated all this um, yeah, attention and all these tributes are coming in from all over the world. Wow. Muhammad Ali said don't count the days make the days count mm. what a story what a life Muhammad Ali lived for everyone that followed this box one way or the other you must have been inspired even even people that were not part of the generation yeah, when he was fighting we were, we were, we were part of it because everybody said float like a butterfly thing like a bee that's oh probably God. you know his most famous mm. uh, quote i've got another one here where it says i am the astronaut of boxing mm. joe lewis and uh, dempsey jack dempsey that is yeah. the way just pilots i am in a world of my own i mean who says that that's just Confidence Astronauts and arrogant go talk. Go farther than pilots. I said, I said, that's just confidence and arrogant mm. talk. But Muhammad Ali actually responded to that and says, I'm not actually arrogant because when I say something, I back it up in the ring. So that don't call me arrogant. Ooh. Mm. Just call me confidence. What a man. What a story. What a story. <laughs> we'll keep celebrating Muhammad Ali, the greatness of Muhammad Ali. What? Legend. When you talk about a legend, this is Muhammad Ali and his life right there. We're done with Sean Rafa in Dubai. Yeah. Let's go to uh, London, the United Kingdom. Mulushego Adjusta, he's a professional boxer also. He's been there, done that with boxing and a champion in his own right. He'll be joining us now to talk about the legendary Muhammad Ali. Good morning, uh, Adjusta, and welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, we are celebrating the life and times of Muhammad Ali. What do you remember when you think of the boxer? Well, uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, as, just as everyone knows, uh, he is the greatest. Uh, it's one thing to, uh, to call yourself the greatest. It's another thing to prove it to the whole world that you're the greatest. So uh, uh, people call him arrogant, but he's not an arrogant man. He's a very, very confident man. Hmm. He believes in, in himself. And he proves it to the to the whole of, to the whole of the world that he's the best and he's the greatest. Nobody can ever be uh, like him. He's he's one of a kind. Uh, it's one thing to achieve greatness. It's another thing to achieve immortality. Hmm. Muhammad Ali has achieved immortality. Hmm. Hmm. As a boxer, uh, I'll just say, what what are the things you learned from you learned from Muhammad Ali that you used inside the boxing ring? Yeah, I was doing the Ali shuffle, you know, uh, when I was in the in my amateur days, and I adapted his uh, his shuffle to my to my own style. Uh, he, he's a wonderful boxer, and he, uh, I learned from him that you don't have to uh, do the conventional guard guard up, which is just to hold your hands up, you know, uh, as a guard. Uh, he was using his his movement more as a defense, and his reaction, his reflexes as a, as a defense. And then using uh, that as a counter attack. So I learned that from him and I adapted it to my own style. Okay, uh, Shago, tell us um, what is your greatest uh, memory of Muhammad Ali in the ring? Yeah, well, I remember the one I watched. Obviously, I'm too young to know uh, <laughs> to to watch him live. Uh, so I remember some one of the videos I watched, and it was telling, and one of the opponents called him. Uh, 
uh, Cassius Clay. And in the ring, he was he was beating the guy, and he was asking him, "What's my name?" <laughs> <laughs> he was beating him. He was saying, "What's my name?" Yeah. Like punishment. He wouldn't stop the guy. He just he was prolonging his punishment and asking him, "What's what's my name?" That's right. So that the guy has to call him Muhammad Ali. Mm. That was after he has changed his name. Yeah. So he is well, he's a, he's a lovely character. He's he's a confident <laughs> character, mm. and that's one of the things that I learned from him. Uh, I mean, you know, I learned how to, how to be confident about yourself and how to, how to say things the way it is, standing up for what you believe. Mm. Muhammad Ali, you know, uh, 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 his legacy goes beyond boxing. Mm. He's, he's a wonderful human being. He's a man that, that shows us that you need to believe him. You, you need to stand for what you believe. He believed something and he stood for it, even though it cost him his freedom, it cost him his title cost him a lot of money. In fact, made a lot of enemies for him. But he, he believed he believed in what he stood for. Uh, what he stood for. That's a, that, that's a man of honor. Mm, okay. Mm. Yeah. Well, Lushago, I, I just said, let's look at um, the life he lived outside boxing. Was it, uh, was it part of what made him a great person? Uh, I, have, I have not heard of anybody that said anything bad about, about Muhammad Ali. But... Uh, living prayer, living uh, boxers, and the past prayer boxers. Uh, everybody, I've, al uh, I've always said some, uh, something very good about him. I, I didn't get the opportunity to meet, to meet him. He was one of the two people I wanted to meet in my life, and I didn't. The second being Nelson Mandela. I met the likes of Sugar, the likes of Sugar Leonard, uh, Marvin, uh, Marvin Agla, uh, uh, Azuma Nelson, but I didn't get to meet Muhammad Ali. Uh, That's one of my. Uh, uh, one of my downside in boxing. Uh, you know, the man is, you know, he, he, whatever, what he does, transcend beyond boxing. He's a lovely human being. Muhammad Ali, based on what I heard from other old boxers, will do anything to help. He wants to help as much, he wanted to help as many people as possible. And what, what he was known for was preaching love. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter your religion. He preach love. Mm. It, you know, it, it's all about love for Muhammad Ali. Okay. It's all about equality, justice, and love. Mm. Come on. Okay. That man is beyond, he's, he's beyond boxing. He's mm. a champion in the ring and outside the ring. And that's another thing I learned from him, that you don't just have to be a champion in the ring. Mm. Outside the ring, you've got to be a good champion as well. Okay. Shall go. I mean, Muhammad, Muhammad Ali was involved in a lot of great fights, a lot of wars, and uh, out of all those fights, which one do you think, you know, was his um, toughest? Uh, I think there was a fight. I can't remember the name of the opponent. There was a fight, and it, then they were doing 15 rounds. And the fight was so hard, and he, wa he wanted to quit in the corner. He just, he, he just said to himself that, okay, you know, I'm going to go one more round. After this next round, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit. But fortunately for him, the opponent quit in that round. The <laughs> opponent stopped in that round. The opponent couldn't come out. And that that shows how hard boxing is. You know, to you gotta give everything you got. I can't remember the name of that opponent. I can't remember the name of that opponent uh, right now. But I can remember that fight clearly when I watched it. He said himself. He said he wanted to quit. He was he was. Planning to quit the next round, but the opponent quit uh, yeah, a round earlier. Wow. All right. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Olushegu. I just said for giving us time to talk about uh, Muhammad Ali. Thank you. Thank you. So that's it. Uh, another professional <sighs> boxer attested to the life and times of Muhammad Ali. So yeah. much to talk about. Let's go on another short break. When we come back, more tributes for the legend. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.